Hello and welcome to episode one of How to Code Games in BBC Basic. This is the first official video of the series following on from the introduction video. In this video we're going to be looking at two different concepts in BBC Basic, the REM statement and the DIM statement. Okay, so first things first, we've got four lines of REM, which are just comments. Um, it's quite common to find these in type in listings, of course, because the programmer would quite often like to have their own name referenced within the program and some indication that they had uh, a level of copyright applying to it as well. So that's all those REM statements are doing there. They're just calling out the name of the game and, of course, the illustrious author of the game, Mr. Mark N. Buckwell. Uh, interestingly, you can also use REM statements as inline comments by using the colon line separator. So a REM statement technically has to occupy the whole of a line, but of course by using the colon um, to indicate to BASIC that this is a new line, uh, you can actually put it in line like this, which helps to give some explanation as to what it is that you're defining on a particular line without having to separate it onto its own line. I personally quite like REM statements that are used like this one at line 110, which help to break up the program into uh, particular chunks because that makes it a lot easier to understand what is actually going on within the program. But anyway, enough about REM statements. They don't actually do anything. So we're going to focus our attention in this video on line 50. Um, rest assured, I'm not going to make one video per line of the, of the program because that would take forever and I'm not sure it would be particularly interesting. But I do think that line 50 is an important one to focus on at the beginning, uh, particularly in light of what I was saying in the introdu introduction about how important it is to define your variables because they really do dictate a lot about what the program is and what it does. So we're going to look at the DIM statement here. I imagine a lot of you watching this series will be very familiar with the concept of defining a variable and having it of a particular data type. So in BASIC, if you want um, a variable to be numeric, you put a percentage sign after the name. And if you want it to be a string or al alphanumeric so to contain letters, numbers, punctuation marks, etc., uh, you put a dollar sign after it or, or what's sometimes called the string sign. Um, but there's something slightly different happening here because, of course, we've prefixed all of these variable declarations with dim, which is a basic keyword. And dim can be used for a number of different purposes, but certainly for the first few items on this line, dim is used to define array variables. Now, an array variable is just a variable that contains multiple values. There's really nothing more to it than that. So instead of defining a variable called score percentage, which I could probably do just as easily, I could just say, oh, I'm help if I declared it, score percentage equals zero, right? So now if I print score percentage, I get a zero. And that's it. Um, likewise, I could do name, dollar, name dollar, uh, dollar sign equals Colin. And if I print name, uh, oops, get my right symbol there, then it prints Colin. Um, that's it. But that's just storing a single value. Um, whereas here, when we look at the these arrays, the number next to it in brackets indicates that that uh, variable is intended to store multiple values. Now, the arrays are indexed from zero. So if I see a nine next to uh, my dim declaration here, what that's actually saying is that I want scores percentage to store 10 different numbers. And each one of those can be referenced individually. So if I now define scores percentage here, it doesn't have to have an S obviously, but I'm keeping it in line with the program. And I put a nine in brackets next to it. It tells me, well done, you've defined an array. So what I can do now is put dim scores percentage nine, which helps me to indicate that I've now want to I want to actually use this um, within the rest of uh, the code that I write, and I can say right I want to look at value the second value in the array, which of course is referenced with a one, because the first value would be referenced with a zero. Now of course there's nothing in it at the moment because all I've done with that dim statement is declare the variable. And it's important to distinguish declaring a variable from instantiating a variable, which means giving the variable a value. So if I wanted to instantiate a particular value within the array, I would just do it by typing scores percentage brackets two, let's say, equals 100. And now if I try to print that value, I get 100. But of course, if I try to print any of the others within that array, there's still nothing in there because all I've done is given one value to one member of the array. The string based arrays work exactly the same way. So if I do dim names dollar nine, 
Um, nothing happens, of course, because there's nothing there. If I was to initially try and look at a value within there, I wouldn't see anything. Of course, I don't get a zero back this time because it's a string array, not, not a numeric array. But in exactly the same way, I can put a value in there. Name one equals Colin. And now if I try to print that, oops, I get Colin. But of course, there's still nothing in there in any of the other values. So name six, for example, still has nothing in it. So these first two um, dims here are what we would call a one dimensional array. And that just means exactly what we've seen here. It's got 10 different values within the array and they're all referenced by the number that indicates which position that value occupies within the array. But you can have something even more special, which is a two dimensional array. And a two dimensional array basically functions like a grid. So you reference the values within the two dimensional array using typical Cartesian coordinates or XY coordinates, if you prefer. And the number of values that that array contains is the first value multiplied by the second. Although strictly speaking, there aren't 35 values in here because of course it's indexed from zero. Both values are indexed from zero. So we should really read that as eight comma six. And so therefore we've actually got 48 values in there. So why have we got this? Um, well, this is being used here to indicate the grid within which the aliens in the game uh, can occupy a particular position. It's important to note that this isn't actually defining the aliens themselves. So it's actually been given a suitable name here because it's called space uh, percentage, not alien percentage. So it's the space within the grid. So each value within that uh, array represents a space on the grid and it can either contain an alien or not contain an alien as the case may be. But that's what the variable is being used for. Um, these two one dimensional arrays are actually being used for uh, something as a pair, even though they're separate values or separate variables. This one holds the top 10 scores and this one holds the names that are appropriate to each of those scores. It doesn't need to store them within some kind of complicated uh, two dimensional array with different data types, of course, because we know that if we look for scores percentage brackets one, then names uh, string brackets one will be the name appropriate to that score. That's just the relationship that they occupy within the program. So although it's not done programmatically itself, the program is the one that relates the two together. And we know that a score at a particular position, it belongs to a name at the same position in the names array. Uh, we've got another two dimensional array here, which is called bombs percentage 10 comma one. And this one is just used for the position of bombs. Again, it's the position, it's not actually the bombs themselves, and it's just indicating whether or not there is or is not a bomb at a particular position. That's all that's being used for here. Now these three arrays are my favorite on this line because they are the arrays that define the sprites for the aliens. Um, when I say defines the sprite, of course we haven't given any of these arrays any values yet, but they will be used for storing it. So alien zero string brackets one, which we should read as a two of course, means that alien zero, can have one of two different graphics, um, which is what we would call a frame within a sprite. And then we've got alien one here, which again can have one of two different graphics to represent it, and alien two, which can have one of two different graphics to represent it. We define each of these separately because we want each one of these aliens to be a different type of alien. And then within that, we can store two different frames of a graphic so that it gives the impression of animation. So if you think back to Cosmic Invaders, the alien mandibles close and open or their antenna move uh, inwards and outwards. Um, and that's what is achieved by defining them as a, two, uh, as a two value array. So they can store two different frames for the same alien. Now, the last value on this line um, is something that we're going to be coming back to at a later stage in this series. I won't dwell on it now, but it just is worth pointing out that the dim statement in BASIC can either be used to define arrays, as we've seen here, either one dimensional arrays or two dimensional arrays. Um, but if you use it like this, where without putting any kind of bracket around the number that follows the uh, variable name, what you're actually doing is you are reserving an area of memory and you're telling the program 
you must not put anything into that bit of memory because I'm reserving it for something I'm going to use it for probably later on. It's a very common device when you want to reserve memory for dropping into 6502 assembly. Um, this program doesn't do that, as I said in the introduction, but that's a very common uh, method of using the DIMM statement in this way to, to reserve some memory for 6502 code. Um, here, all we're actually saying is we want to reserve four bytes of memory because remember it's indexed from zero. So this ch uh, percentage variable is actually just being used as a reference to a four byte area of memory that we're going to reserve. We don't need to talk any more about it for now because I don't want to get into the realms of memory reservation and heaps and all the rest of it. We will come to that at a later stage, but just remember that the dim statement can be used in that way as well. So that pretty much concludes uh, line 50. As I say, I'm not going to do one video per line of the program. That would be very tedious, uh, but this is an important line. Uh, it helps set out some of the most important variables for the program. Not all of them, but definitely some of the most important because they really do, um, particularly space percentage and, and the different aliens here, they really do um, do a lot of heavy lifting within the program later on. So in the next video, uh, we're going to look at uh, line 60 through to 100 um, and have an understanding of what's going on here before we then dive into the heady world of Mode 7 graphics. I hope you'll join me for the next few videos in the series. And until then, goodbye.